Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and of course it's launch day in the Falcon Heavy, and everyone is asking me what I'm thinking, and I'm like thinking, well, I've got a separate day job, but I am, of course, going to be watching this Falcon Heavy thing, because this is very, very cool for people that are really into rockets. So yeah, I mean, the Falcon Heavy, it's going to be the biggest, heaviest launch vehicle currently operating, assuming that it works, right? Uh, in theory, 60 tons to low Earth orbit, assuming you actually expend all the stages. But if you try to recover all the stages, you're not going to get anything like that performance. Tomorrow is going to be the first launch. It is going to be carrying a test payload, which is the Midnight Cherry Red Tesla Roadster. With a passenger, Steve Jurvetson posted on his Twitter feed some pictures showing a... Uh, SpaceX spacesuit in the driver's seat. Also, the rig looks like it has some uh, extraneous hardware, which are going to be cameras, I would imagine, so that we can get a good view of this thing flying through space. I don't see any solar panels, which would be a real shame because, of course, it's going to be playing David Bowie and it would be really nice if it could ride eternal, you know, shiny and midnight cherry red on its way to Mars. Um, so yeah, 80% chance of good weather tomorrow. If not, if they have to scrub for that, 70% chance on Wednesday. They had a conference call today as well. So they revealed some stuff about the development of Falcon Heavy and BFR. The big news, I guess, is that the Falcon Heavy is not getting human rated. They're deciding that they want to just focus on the BFR. And this means that their mission, or their tourist mission, where they were going to stick a Dragon 2 on top of a Falcon Heavy and send it around the moon, that's not going to happen. That's going to get pushed to the BFR. Now, I don't know if the, they're going to give the guys their money back or they've, they've got their first flight for the BFR figured out. Really don't know, but I'm, I'm guessing this means that the BFR is going to be... Is, you know, development is continuing. Development is progressing. Also, they're revealing, or they revealed, that there's going to be a six-hour cruise before they perform the full interplanetary injection maneuver. So this is to demonstrate a new capability of the regular Falcon and the Falcon Heavy. What they want to do is show that it's able to do full geostationary injection, right? And that means they can you know, take the satellite up to geostationary orbit and then use the second stage to actually inject it into the geostationary orbit. And that is apparently a feature that the Delta IV Heavy has that the certain groups in the military are really interested in using. So this is going to demonstrate it's apparently going to push it into an eccentric orbit that crosses through the Van Allen belts for six hours. There are chances that things may go wrong. It might You might find that fuel freezes, radiation does something bad. You know, this is why they test this. But assuming that all works, six hours later, it'll perform a burn. And it'll presumably be on the dark side of Earth at that point. Because that's the way you want to go if you're going outwards. If you're going inwards, you'll do it on the daytime side. Uh, <laughs> that'll take you out to uh, Mars. And it'll cycle between Earth and Mars for as long as it goes. Uh, and yeah, sh riding shiny and eternal and everything. Um, yeah, Elon Musk was also asked how soon they would be able to do a follow-up with the Falcon Heavy. And he said three to six months. So Elon time probably says at least six months before the next one. And we all know that the second flight that's supposed to go on this is uh, going to be a collection of government vehicles, including the mission to test green fuel. Um, the video also shows the two boosters returning to land at the same time, which would look amazing, but apparently they are going to separate the landing by 15 seconds between these two. And I'm guessing the reason is that the big unknown in this launch is the interactions between the three boosters, you know, the rockets and the reaction control thrusters, and having them separated will minimize this risk. This is the big, the thing that, you know, they know the engines work. They know most of the other things work. They just haven't ever landed, you know, these Falcon boosters next to each other. So I'm guessing that's what's going to happen. Also, of course, I Still Love You is going to be sitting 350 kilometers off the coast to catch the center stage. Uh, the, the 
Falcon, uh, of course, the Falcon second stage is going to do its thing. The Tesla is going to go off. It's going to fly to Mars. And uh, another little tidbit that came out in the last few days is Doug Ellison did the math and pointed out that actually you don't need a Falcon Heavy if you want to send a 1300 kilogram Tesla Roadster to Mars. You can actually do that in a regular Falcon 9 or indeed an Atlas V. So, yeah. There, if uh, this one doesn't work and you really want to send a sports car to Mars, you don't have to go with SpaceX, but obviously they're going to be cheaper than anyone else. No, it's it's going to be very exciting. And, uh, you know, at the same time, yeah, obviously other launch providers are going to be watching this because it could change the market again in a way that may not be to their advantage. So, yeah, seriously, hope you guys have a great flight don't be afraid to scrub if something looks bad. You know, you don't want to push your luck. You want to make sure everything is right because I want to see that that going to Mars. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>